Holly Cotton here, and what do I say every time I start a show where I have something that revolves around women empowerment, I love, love, love in, in, um, interacting with people that are doing things for women, especially. I love my men and everything, but whenever I see someone that's a woman and she's trying to do other things to uplift women, I'm like, yes, let me highlight her hear her story, share her story. And I also do that because I think that sometimes you don't know that something is important to do or that something is even being done. And then when you hear someone else's story, you're like, oh, I should do that in my city or my state or my community or my circle. So that's why I love bringing these topics to you guys. So I would like to introduce you guys to LaToya Hurley, who is the founder of Innovating Marketing Group, and she is a professional storyteller strategist. She has done a whole bunch of things where she's grown companies. She's uh, out here. She's always in my DM trying to get somebody on my show, um, she <laughs> which I love. I love. I love. But in addition to that, she also has a mission for women's rights and empowerment. And we're going to talk about one of the events that she's actually having and sort of hear her story and what she's doing. So welcome, thank you Latoya. so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, of course, of course. Okay. So before we go into the event and the everything that we're trying to do with this event, the, the platform, all of that stuff, go on and tell us some more about you. Cause I did just give a brief bio, but I know that that was just really a synopsis of all the great things you're doing. So tell us about Latoya and then also tell us about your company. Absolutely. So again, like I said, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. We're putting on this power of vision event and the thought behind this all started based on my own personal journey during my time in corporate America, but also as I have transitioned into entrepreneurship full time. So I had a successful career in transportation and also oil and gas for about a total of 13 years. Transitioned for this year makes five years ago full time into entrepreneurship. And so I moonlighted between oil and gas and operating the company. And I could physically see some of the disparities um, specifically for entrepreneurs, but also women entrepreneurs that they face in this space. And so coming from having million dollar budgets to now working with these small business owners that may not have the discretionary cash that you do in corporate, I wanted to say these are strategies that we can use and resources that we can use, but people just are not aware that they're available to them. And so that's how we got here today. I wish somebody would have given me a tap on the shoulder to say, hey, here's some resources and here's how you can do this easier. And so now that I have this information, I want to be able to pay it forward. And so a little bit, let me ask one more thing. I'm sorry. Uh, in terms of helping people in this particular market, also, I am a part of Forbes BLK's Leadership Council. So in terms of helping African-Americans, I am here with a ear to the street championing initiatives and want to hear from other entrepreneurs on how we can be of service as well. Mm. Okay. Yes. I love that. I love that. And that's one of the things that I take a great pride in with my show as well, because I love whenever I have someone that comes on and they, they're successful in whatever it is that they're doing. And I'm like, okay, how can I ask a particular question so that that actually can help someone else who maybe is doing the same thing as them, that they can maybe cut a corner or not learn something the hard way because it's hard out here when you by yourself. It's hard. Yes, it is. <laughs> You're gonna spend, Very. Right, you're gonna spend a whole lot of time figuring out stuff, googling things, doing uh, research, all of this stuff, and then you could very easily be in, in circles and networking with people like yourself and, and the content and some of the people that are coming to your event, network with them, and you might be able to absorb and receive some of that information that you didn't even know that you needed. So I love that. I love that. So your role in your in your company is you are obviously the founder, but tell us about your company and what, what it is that you do as like, not about just the event, but Latoya Hurley and what her company is. Absolutely. So even though I am the founder of Innovative Marketing and we'll discuss some of these components also at the event, I am still an employee of the company. 
So I have not fully transitioned into being the founder or the chief executive officer of the company. I am still an employee and I operate and oversee all of the marketing and PR initiatives for the company, the sales piece. So um, creating opportunities, still pitching um, clients for opportunities, hence why I slide in Holly's DM. <laughs> okay, I don't mind, I don't um, mind. <laughs> Um, building up the sales team and still uh, project managing a lot of the initiatives, whether it's event activations, PR campaigns, social media campaigns, and parsing that out to our various different staff members. Mm, okay, got it. Just so we can kind of know the background and sort of why you're here, like you, you're you not just, you know, here as someone that has no knowledge and you're trying to do something. Like, I just wanted to pull it out about what you were speaking about. Okay, so... Let's go into, I know you said oil and gas, and I know for a fact, oil and gas is definitely a male dominated industry. We're not even talking about race here. We're just talking about <laughs> the battle of the sexes. Uh, I, I have a girlfriend and she's like, she's a C, I don't know, CEO. I don't, she's some kind of big boss or whatever. And, and so I just know, I remember like following her page for the last 10 years and she's, it's always one of her with like 30 men when they go to Denmark or Amsterdam or wherever they are, they it's her and like a hundred men. So tell me about the, the shift of that. Like whenever you decided that this was something you were going to transition away from, go back and remind and tell us about that actual departure. Oh, yes. So this departure to me was such a pivotal moment, but it also let me know the work that I did in oil and gas was also very monumental to the individuals around me. Um, worked for this company for seven years. And during that time, we were able to conquer a lot of milestones. Um, I oversaw projects up to the tune of about 10 million. I was a part of successfully helping them to bring on different software that would allow us to stay on top of the regulations, um, provide feedback as it related to responses to regulatory bodies, and then also transitioning what they call T4s. And I won't get into the technical side of it, but you guys have pipelines that run in your backyard. Um, and those pipelines, there is a process that happens pre the pipeline even being installed, pre-construction, in order for us to get approved to run those pipelines. I am a part of the team that is pre the pipeline getting installed, making sure that that gets approved, making sure that it meets the regs, and making sure that we send the information over to the regulators that meets the specifications based on different demographic information. And so that is solely what I did in corporate. And during that time, like I said, we were able to hit major milestones. Fast forward, I get to my last year at the company and I have hit the glass ceiling in the department that I'm in. Oil and gas professionals typically are engineered um, or, or engineer or have an engineering degree. That is not my background. I have a marketing degree or a business with a concentration on marketing. And so I get to the point where I have hit the ceiling and there is nowhere else that I can progress in the current role that I'm in. So I have a decision to make either stay where I'm at and hold on to the hope and, and, and that there's going to be something greater to come along or some position that is created and or put all of my energy into the business full time and grow it to where I would like to see it go. I make the decision to bet on myself. Um, in that process, over the course of the next year, I would have to build the company up to match my corporate income based on what my financial advisor said <laughs> and, and make it to where it is a profitable business model that I can now take and implement, but also it is scalable where I can bring in staff, we have processes and procedures. So that is what I would spend the next year doing. After being with people for seven years, you tend to love them, you tend to like them, they are like family. Um, in oil and gas, you work a lot of hours. So I spent a lot of time with my then family and me and my director at the time, it was Christmas when I submitted my notice, he and I were going to lunch because he goes skiing every year. We sit down and he's telling me about what's forthcoming in the following year, which at that time was 2019. 
And I feel so bad. So I tell him, I said, you know, I love you. Like you are family. And so I'm going to say this before you go on vacation, because I don't want you to be shocked when you come back. But when you come back, I am submitting my 30 days notice. And the look of shock set in. And so what I initially started out to give 30 days notice then turns into I stayed an additional four months. And four months, a part of it was this is family, so I love them and I wanted to make sure that they were taken care of, but also fear set in. There is something amazing about having a steady paycheck versus going into the unknown. <laughs> so, everyone's like, you gave four additional months. I'm like, I gave four months, but a part of it was this is my safety blanket. And so I'm holding on to it with dear life. And so in that four months, um, I found my replacement, trained my replacement, and then decided to leave. And on that last day, I remember the feeling of wanting to run back in the building. I still get tearful to this day because it was like I had left my family for the first time. Like I was going to college or something and I had never left home. And I literally cried the whole way home and spent the rest of the day in bed. Like I said, I feel myself getting tearful, but it was one of those moments when you spend that much time with people, um, good, bad, and ugly, because every day is not going to be sunshine. You love them. And so it was definitely a hard transition leaving them. But now that I am here, we still keep in contact and, um, maybe a few months ago or a month ago, one of my previous directors left a message and said, I'm proud of you. And it meant the world to me as if my father had tapped me on my shoulder and said, daughter, I'm happy you have arrived. So that is how we got here. 2019, uh, my last month in corporate was April, uh, beginning of May. And so I have not looked back since. Well, and I was going to say that the exact same thing that you said too, that a lot of times we get so loyal and we get so comfortable that that change is hard. And so that's why, um, that's why you always hear people say that phrase, you know, diamonds form under pressure because either you're sitting around doing the same thing, no pressure, no challenges, no nothing. You know, you have a check coming in and sometimes you bet on yourself and you win. Now, sometimes you bet on yourself and you lose. And now, now you got to go back to corporate America. So it's not always peaches and cream on the other side. So it, it's definitely scary whenever you make that transition, but that's going to lead us into this event that you have that's coming up. And that's why I really wanted to talk, uh, get you on before the event so that I could actually talk about it and act, have some clips at least that came out to kind of share what's going on because I love what you're doing. And I know you guys, Latoya gave me a little rundown of, of the series of, of things, uh, the series, the chain of events that happened to get her to this event right now. And so she's going to tell us about that. And basically, you know, she wants to use um, things that she's learned. And also she wants to have actual resources. And if you guys listen to me talk, you guys ever hear me host anything, moderate anything, when I'm pulling questions out of people, I'm like, yeah, okay. We love the spiritual side. We love all of that, you know, affirmations, but what is concrete? What is tangible? What are we leaving people that are watching and using us as resources? What are we actually giving those people? So good news, LaToya actually has something she's going to give you guys. So tell us about the event that you have coming up on March 9th and how you came about with this actual event. Absolutely. So Everything you said just resonates. Faith without work is dead. So yes, faith is so important. You have to have it. But without the work, nothing else gets done. When I decided to leave corporate, God is so funny, uh, 2019 was the year right before COVID. And so we close out 2019, uh, going into business full time, you start to understand the ebbs and flows of the business, uh, which is really the, the up seasons and the down seasons, because every day is not going to be sunshine. And I feel like now I'm coming into like we're coming into stride and then COVID happens and everything shuts down. And so if you don't have the resources, the people that you can ask the right questions, a lot of businesses did not make it through COVID because they didn't have those right components. So fast forward, we get to 2021. We open an office and in this time frame between 2021 to 2024, which is where we're at now, 
I have really just watched the business evolve from even what I thought it was going to be in 2018 up until where we're at now. And a reason why I was able to do that is because of trusted advisors, having great relationships with my banker so that I could go and have those conversations and figure out what changes need to happen within the business for me to sustain. Because even as a thriving business, like I said, when we get into those seasons of when's, when's our up season, when's our down season, how do we regulate that? And then also during those down seasons, what are the options available from a financing perspective? That is where your banker is going to come in at. And that is where it's important to have a relationship. And albeit, yes, we have Chase there. These banks have a certain profile of business that they're looking for. And you need to understand what that looks like so you can select the right person when you decide to sign up with a bank or have the right people around you because there are other resources that can help. That is how we arrived here. So during that time going through, whether it was leadership development, whether it was the financing piece, um, the real estate piece, I came across all of these great contacts and NPR, you run into so many great people. Those are the individuals that are the reason that I am still here and standing. They're the reason that I'm able to navigate the storm, but I also talk to and hear from a lot of women that don't have that. And they're still trying to figure it out and understand how do I get there? Who do I need to talk to? And it's hard to have a million different conversations, but it is easier to bring everybody into a room where somebody may ask the question that you may not have known just because you didn't know how to structure it. And we can answer those questions. And that is where resources come in. So we are putting this event together on March the 9th. It is a part of a series that we are doing and so this is the first one for 2024, where we are bringing in those resources, but also giving you the knowledge and information on how can I get to the bigger contracts? So Edward Pollard is going to be there talking about how do you work with the city? Those are some of your bigger contracts. And the city has a quota or number set aside that they have allocated to women-owned businesses and then also minority-owned businesses. He will talk about that piece of it. We'll also have a VP from Chase that will talk about what is the profile of what they're looking for? What are some of the resources? Because even though you may not meet the profile for Chase, they now have financial literacy uh, programs that they are going to help business owners get to where they need to get to so that you can be what they call bankable and do business with Chase. And then we'll have other entrepreneurs that have walked the path that you have walked. Because I think sometimes people see the, the rosy side of what we put out on social media, this quick soundbite, and those sound bites, sound bites are great. It is a celebration. That is what it's intended, it's intended for. You're here to celebrate with us, but we don't share some of the downtimes and some of the dark sides to that, like stress, the anxiety that comes along with, you know, I'm waiting on the... <laughs> this check and it's not coming fast enough and so what do I do in the meantime and they're going to share those stories about how do you network across how do you leverage your network to help with your net worth what how do you create a profile on social media that can help you to make money because it's also about having different revenue streams we're going to talk about it and we're here to answer questions uh, we want to hear from you because it's important for us to know where, how can we meet you where you are at? And that is overall what we wanted to do with this event and what we plan to achieve. So if we were doing a soundbite right now and you have 30 seconds to tell me why I should mm -hmm. come to the Power of Vision event, what would you say? It's easy. We are not just another brunch. We are here to help. And so if you want to go to a Mean Girl brunch, this is not it. We are here to be a resource for you to talk to us, for you to ask questions, and we want to answer your questions and help and get connected. So whether you want to slide in my DM, I am the girl that will answer. I may not have the total answer, but I can point you in the direction of who you need to talk to. This is not just another brunch. You need to get here. Okay. All right. Okay. Just, you know, since we doing <laughs> sound bites. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I wanted to also add on to something that you said uh, whenever we're talking about businesses and, and being an entrepreneur and taking that idea out of your head, what I think a lot of times what people don't really look at is they start looking at those, like you said, those downhills, those, those, whenever we're in those troughs, whenever we're like, oh my gosh, this isn't working. But 
you will go work for an organization for years and years and years. I know, especially like healthcare, you know, we have people and they work for um, an insurance company, managed care organization. They might work for a, a, um, a system, you know, here in Houston, we have these huge hospital systems in place and they will work and they will go from maybe one department to the other department and they'll just stay. But if you read those new le newsletters, you'll see that those, th those, you know, the CEOs and whoever it is, on those newsletters, they're telling you, hey, it was a bad year this year, or hey, we were struggling in this and we're trying to do this. They actually are <laughs> telling you that they too have, you know, those peaks and troughs in business, but then we have these uh, our own business ideas and we're like, oh, you know, it's just that confidence or, or the resources and the tools. And we're like, this isn't working. And you give it one year and then you're, you give up on, on something that could have made it in year three, not year one, not year two, but maybe year three, you somebody in year three, you know? <laughs> so I love that. I love that. Now, let me ask you this, Latoya, since you, you said that you guys do like the vision board and the envisioning, and then now we're, you know, trying to do the execution. So whenever you're listening to women that are talking, cause you're in the room, what are some of the common things that you hear women struggling with whenever they're trying to either start their business or maybe they had an idea and how to repurpose it? Like what are some of the common struggles that you're hearing that women are having? Absolutely. So that is a great question. When I sit down and talk to women, either A, the idea is not fully vetted or B, it's just not the appropriate business model. And so just like you said, a lot of times you haven't given it enough time for you to, to gather information. So one of the examples that I always like to give people, I've been in business for 13 years. When we started the company, I worked in entertainment entertainment as i also continue to progress in the business is to in in terms of who i am as a person it was not the successful lane for me and then when i started thinking about sustainability and scaling the business in order for me to hire someone else my entertainment contracts were shorter because they were more project based um, until you get to bigger talent those contracts are typically going to be three months because of the profile of who you're servicing. So I had to transition. And so we no longer do any entertainment clients. We only focus on business owners. And now we even have that niche down to four markets. That is our specialty. We focus on impact. So finance, nonprofit, real estate, and then also health and wellness. Those are the four sectors. A lot of times we have a great idea, but we're not focused on the right group of people or it's not the right business model for what we're trying to do. And in executing that, we get discouraged. And because it's not moving, so like you said, it might be year three. Because it's not moving as quickly as you want it, you want it to, you might be headed in the wrong direction. So those three years could have been spent going the wrong direction. And so when you start over, it may take another three years. The benefit for me was I had seven years of running the business in conjunction with being in corporate and having a great salary that if when I decided to switch, there was a year where we cleared out all of our entertainment contracts, but we had to wait until the end of the contracts and then submit 30 days notice. Well, I had the bandwidth to be able to do it because I had a corporate salary that I could rely on. For those that are full-time in business, you may not have the luxury of, I can now just close all of these contracts out and transition. And so that is one of the biggest things that I think that I hear when I talk to women, they don't have a business model that is sustainable. And consequently, they get fatigued in the process. And then you hear what you hear. I'm tired. It didn't work. And they go back to a corporate job where this corporation could have had a bad year, but you're still there. <laughs> you stayed and you're working with them. Why not bet on yourself? And I understand that also, and I say this to people, working for yourself is not for everybody. So I'm not selling the dream because it is a lot of work. But if you left because it didn't move as fast as you wanted, bet on yourself and give yourself some time and give yourself some grace. And you know, I wanted to also just kind of sidebar on what you said to LaToya, because I'll be honest, I, you know, I'm in these spaces where 
I meet so many uh, young entrepreneurs now, you know, and, and so they, maybe they went to college and they never had a corporate America job or they never had a job where they were like, you know, I say corporate America, but when I say that, I'm, I mean like the whole umbrella of you had a real job for a corporation. It doesn't matter whether you were manager or whatever, like you weren't in a cubicle, you never had that opportunity. They maybe went to college. A lot of times they haven't gone to college. They sort of went off and did their thing or whatever. But I will say that there is definitely a, a benefit to, I think it's even for me when I think about my, the way that I'm able to navigate situations, being in corporate, and, and being in corporate America and being a manager in healthcare has given me so much more ability to navigate being an entrepreneur because one, I, you know, I had the discipline from it. I know how to talk to people. I know how to brush things off. A lot of times it's hard, you know, whenever you're, you don't have that experience, like you have to know what it's like for a boss to come in and talk to you crazy. And you like, who the hell are you talking to? Hey, but you know, you need that job. So you just, you like, okay, whatever. So some like you, you learn to humble yourself or you learn how to navigate things you learn how to talk to people. So I think that there is actually a perk to if you have already worked a real job instead of just coming from being, you know, nothing with no experience. So I could agree. Um, it is one of the selling points that I tell people when they sign up with us. I'm like, you're talking to someone and, and not that they can't have great entrepreneurs that didn't work in corporate, but I do feel like. I have a competitive advantage and those of us that have have a competitive advantage because we've come from infrastructure. We've come from discipline. We also understand the importance of customer service. And when you work in a corporation, that is one of the pillars as it relates to communicating with your external customers. That customer service piece is so huge. And so we don't have the latitude to just scream, holler. Like you said, a manager comes in and talks to you crazy. And you like, listen, who, who are you talking to? <laughs> You, you got to humble yourself and really understand. And so I think there is a level of discipline, a level of humbleness that comes along with working in corporate and then the infrastructure piece. And that is actually what I tell clients. You're not just getting someone that's good at the PR piece, but you're also getting someone that has project management experience and understands the importance of customer service. So There'll never be a day where you call me and I'm screaming. If I'm frustrated, I understand how to dial that back and control my emotions and or say, hey, I've got a lot going on right now. Is it possible for us to have this phone call on a different date or reschedule? And I can effectively communicate with them. You can learn these skills as an entrepreneur, but I can tell you my company that I work for, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in developing us as leaders. So each year they had money allocated to sending me to training. So I took strategic mm -hmm. communication, writing, and that was underneath the Culture, company outside. Uh, of DEI. <laughs> <laughs> Healthcare is always blood yeah. warm pathogens, right. <laughs> and that to me is what makes us a little bit more competitive or gives us that advantage. Because like you said, we have all that. And we know how to effectively communicate. Yeah, I just wanted to sidebar about that because sometimes I'm like, you know, I I know that you see I'm on social media or my Instagram, I'm in a bikini or I'm doing this or I'm eating cheesecake or whatever. But there's also a professional Holly that comes in that, you know, I'm always like, don't forget, I got a master's in nursing. Like, don't play with me. Like, I'm just out, out here like, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm like, I'm not just one of these little influencer girls. Like, I'm really know what I'm talking about. But anywho, I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> so the last question I wanted to ask you about whenever we're talking about execution. So whenever you were saying that you guys did the vision board and then you were saying some of the common struggles that most women talk about whenever they go in these rooms, men too, because you know, we're, we're, but we're specifically talking about women because it's women history month and it's a women empowerment month, but for the men that are listening. So whenever we're talking about execution, what is one of the, 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 I guess the common 
ideas that people say whenever they're giving advice or whenever you're having these panelists and people are asking the questions, what is uh, one piece of advice that you hear that's a commonality that a lot of the people say, hey, these are some of the things that you need to do if you're trying to take the idea in your head and actually make it into a business, this is what you need to be doing. So one of the, the and this is going to be so cliche because it's so simple, get started. A lot of people get stuck in idea that it never moves to execution. I need to write the business plan. So they spend a year writing a business plan. The business plan that I wrote when I first started has evolved three, four times over. Get started. You don't know what you don't know. I couldn't tell you that I didn't. Entertainment was not what I wanted to do until I actually did it. And so that is the biggest thing. Those that sit on those panels and they go through all of this information, they got started and they refined it. They brought in the experts that may have been needed at a certain level, but at the most basic level, get started. And maybe you need the motivational push. Maybe you feel like I don't have the resources. There are free websites. There are all these tools out there. Get started. No one has an excuse not to get started. And then from there, you can go back and continue to refine and evolve that idea. But you'll never get there if you never start. If you talk yourself out of it, if you beat yourself up over, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have the resources, you will never get there. Mm, I love that. And, it, you know, your girl got a best selling book called Day One A Guide to Identifying, Organizing, and Executing Any Goal, which is also an ebook and e course. So, <laughs> once you decide today is your day one, don't worry. Thank you, Latoya, for leading me into that. I love it. Don't worry, your girl got you day one available anywhere where you can buy a book Walmart, Target, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, everything. So, <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, and so, but one of the things that I was going to say also too, is that it's, it's a level of confidence that I find. And I, 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 I struggle a lot of times to understand whenever people come to me, but as a life coach, I've learned how to figure out how to speak life into other people and not use, uh, I guess my, my personality to put on you because I've never been someone that's afraid to fail. I've always been like, okay, well, let me try it. If I don't like it, then I don't like it. Or if I can't do it and I really want to do it, I'm going to figure out another way to do it. You know, like I've always since a child. So when I talk to people and they do that, you know, or, or you know, especially men, I think a lot, have a lot of confidence. You know, they have this imposter syndrome. They go in, they act like a boss at work. They're bossing people around. But then when you talk to them about other things where they don't have a structured plan, they don't know how to adapt to that. So it's like a, a confidence that's sort of missing and, and they, they're afraid to fail. They don't know. They feel like they need all the pieces together. And, you know, I think one of the biggest pieces of feedback I always say is that if you don't believe in your idea, how can you expect other people to? When I come in, you don't know what I'm selling, but baby, I'm selling it so hard. You have no choice. You're just like, I just like the way she talked about it. I want to go buy it. Like this. <laughs> so it's like, what is, what is it that you're selling? What is it? So I know that you guys are going to do that whenever we're at, at the event or whatever, but what is something just leave whoever's listening? Cause again, I know you're in these rooms. I know you're hearing people. I know you're doing it as well. So for the people that maybe need a little confidence booster, what is some advice that you can give them? Because they're like, you know what? You're right, Latoya. I'm going to start. I'm going to give me a business model. I'm going to do something, but yeah, I still don't know. Is this a good idea? Should I do this? What should I do? So what's, <laughs> give them a little confidence booster or a little piece of advice to help those people. So regardless of how you guys may think, either I speak well, because I get that a lot, like, oh, you're so well-spoken. We are all still figuring it out. So if you think I have all the pieces to the puzzle figured out, nope, I've had to revamp, go back and redo it. I've got clients now that are making millions that are still having to figure it out and evolve. And so don't let what you see externally make you believe that you can't do it because none of us have all of the tools, some of us have just surpassed where you're at, but we're still figuring out at the next level. So it's okay to not have it all figured out. The biggest thing is getting started. 
there you go. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. I keep trying to tell them, Latoya, they don't want to listen. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> you got to sell the product. And if the product is you, sell you. What are you doing to sell no you? Products. You post <laughs> once a year. Like, no, be obnoxious with it, you know? Hello. Because the people that are supposed to be there are going to stay. I've heard, so at one point in time, I used to do coaching and as I've continued to scale the business and that's why I'm like, you figure it out. I figured out that me personally, I did not like doing coaching. It, it, it took so much out of me and I'm like, I need to, this is not something that I enjoy doing. So just like you said, I started, I'm like, uh, I did it for an entire year uh, during COVID and I'm like, I'm going to pivot away from this. And we're going to focus strictly on our PR clients and doing large scale PR um, campaigns. But you can pivot, you can change, you can see something and say, I, I don't like this. I, I need to, I, I'm still figuring this part out. And if you don't believe it, a lot of times, like you said, some things that I'm saying, people believe it just because I'm delivering it in such a way that it sounds good. <laughs> They're like, I don't know what it is, but I just want some of that. And I was going to tell you, too, I totally understand because I used to, so I am a certified personal trainer and I used to train people. And now I'm like, there's no way, like, and probably in maybe seven, eight years, I was like, I can't do it anymore. Like, because you have to want to want, like, I am not, I am, I do not have the mental capacity to baby you. I can only work with people that want to do something that are dedicated to it, that are, that are actively trying to change or do whatever i'm not i'm not going to knock the twinkie out of your hand i'm not going to do this i'm not giving you the pep talk every <laughs> single day you know what i'm saying like we all get up and you have to make the decision to choose you every day i can't i cannot baby people so i i when you said pivot away i totally can understand because it's like you tell people okay so this is how you're going to do it right so you need to do a b and c and i can already hear them but i don't like to do a what but why are we not doing b well so and so did it like this you know what? Then go do it. <laughs> right. And that's why I'm like, I, I just, it was so much. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, pick, I pick what I'm going to do and I can't, that's not one of the things I can do. My kids are the same way. They were like, you know, you weren't really the sensitive mom. And I'm like, no, but you know what? I was the mom that was supportive. I was the mom that was like, come on, let's get this going. Let's figure it out. Let's do it. No, that's I'm not the one that's going to be like, oh. You know, I'm gonna be like, okay, you screwed up. Let's go. How we fixing it? I, that ain't me. I ain't that mama. That's, yeah, like, I am solution driven. How, what's next? How are we fixing right. it? Right. You, it. Get, you <laughs> get one day to cry. I tell my friends all the time. And when, like, if somebody hurts my feelings, or not somebody, but if something hurts my feelings, I'm venting about it to one person. So whoever the one person is that answers, I just need to vent, and I'm never talking about it again. Like that's it. Yeah, I'm venting. I'm having a, a sad moment. I'm screwed up right now. <laughs> and then after that, all right, let's get it moving. Now we move forward. You get to, and, and it's funny because I have that same rule. Sit in it for 24 hours. And then after that, we yeah, move forward. You gotta uh, be that's realistic that's too. Like you got life, life be life in. You know, like we're not gonna say that it's not. It, it, sometimes you get punched in the stomach and you and you're like, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> Okay, let me have my day. Let me go eat my ice cream or my cookie or with crumble. I don't know, whatever. And then, you know what? Next day, your girl's back. <laughs> next. On to the next. So, I, I get it. That. I love that. Okay. So, Latoya, go ahead and give us all the information about the event. I I have like five episodes that are in the vault right now, but I'm going to put yours on this yeah, like this weekend, so that way we can get some traction for it. So we just gonna cut them other people because your event is coming up. So I want to make sure we get your information out. So what is the information about the event? Because I want people to go and attend, especially if you have an idea that you're working on. Maybe you haven't even written it down yet. You just want to be in the room where there's some people that are doing something to motivate you. So whatever it is, drop, and then also drop your social media stuff, website, all of that information. Absolutely. So March 9th, this is not just another brunch. We want you in the room. We want you sitting next to women that can help. We are going to be at Fig and Olive in the Galleria. So it's conveniently located. There is a bunch of free parking. Also, there are valet options from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. There will be an award segment. We want to bring women in that are helping to move the culture. So we will be highlighting 
uh, three to four women that are helping to actively move the culture. And you can hear about their stories and what they're doing, as well as we will have a panel discussion of different experts. Uh, one of the young ladies uh, retired at the age, I believe she is 45, but she put it on her vision board, said she was going to retire at this time, executed and built a huge, wildly successful real estate portfolio and was able to retire because she built her team. And so those are the type of stories that we want you to hear on how do you bring that vision to execution. Tickets are being sold on Eventbrite. And so there are various different codes. Um, please use code vision to get $10 off of your ticket purchase. We'd love to see you in that room. And then lastly, but not least, I always tell people, which is the funniest thing, it is my full name across all social media, Latoya Hurley, if you are looking for me. So Instagram, Facebook, and or LinkedIn. If you are looking for Innovative Marketing Group, it is going to be Innovative Marketing Group across all social media as well. And so we'd love for you to get in contact with us if you are looking for some type of PR or how can we execute or help you or just a mentor. Um, we have opportunities. And so inbox me, slide into my DM. I respond. I don't. Don't send me one. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a woman or you know something. But yeah, I always put that disclaimer. Well, Holly, mm -mm, Holly did not say that. Latoya Hurley said that. Mm -hmm. uh, I will respond now. I can't promise you that it's going to be the answer that you want, but I promise you that I will respond. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, good. I love that. And I'll also have all of uh, Latoya's information as well. And I do the same thing, Latoya. I have like, I'm always like Holly Cotton, Holly Cotton.com, Holly Cotton, Holly Cotton, Holly Cotton. Like anything that I touch is going to be under the umbrella Holly Cotton. And I tell people that all the time, like, they're like, oh my gosh, I want to do like you. Or I want to be, I want to, oh, I want to be an influencer. I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, how did you do that? And I'm like, first of all, I can't even find you on social media. Your name is we, the church, the thing, that God. Is Branding 101. Consistency. Like, if I Google you, what shows up? <laughs> I got to go look under Julie here, you know, F, F underscore here. And it's like. Loves the Lord, the something, this, or whatever it is. Or the, you know, like everyone has like what, what their product is in it. And I get it. I'm like, okay, you know what? Y'all need to go to one of these conferences and do business from personal, separate. But anywho, I'll yeah. be in attendance. Your girl's going to be looking cute, of course. Me and my assistant will be there, yes. Latoya can't wait to, to be a part of the group. So I love that. I love that. And you guys reach out to her. She said she has four divisions that she does that they focus on real estate, health, real estate, health and wellness, nonprofit and finance. Okay. So if that ain't you, don't call her. Don't bother her. <laughs> All right, that is Latoya Hurley, you guys. Thanks, Latoya. 